there is a new King of the Sky in Path of Titans. Atsukopterix. With a wingspan that rivals that of small planes, it is a beast of the sky. And the developer was so kind to give us this on Christmas. So, let's see how this Christmas gift of theirs stacks up against their other creations. Hello there, my name is Adam Vokter, and in this video I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Hapsigopterex, which I'm from now on gonna call Haps for short, just because it's easier. At the date of this video, it's just been a few days since its release, so there will definitely be a few uh, changes or fine tunes, because we all know how this goes. Developer makes stuff, they release stuff, people play them, people complain about them, and then they need a rework. With that in mind, what I'm about to say are definitely temporarily, so do keep that in mind. I would also normally clarify that you guys with more experience with this creature might not disagree with everything I say, however this thing just got released a few days ago so we don't have two good players with them yet. In fact, in my opinion, this creature are one of the more difficult creatures to play as. You will find out why in this video. Speaking of which, in this video we will first be going over the creature's arsenal, the choice of subspecies, the fighting style, the terrain compatibility, and the types of fight you can find yourself in, and the fact that you need to pick and choose your target as this creature, and at the end I'll summarize. With head ability, we have a few options and we can equip two of them. First off, we have Clamp. Basically, this ability allows the hats to grab other players to a certain size and carry them to a dangerous altitude, or wherever you want to take them to. This ability doesn't really do any real damage, the intention of this is just to grab other players and carry them, so this is not really good for damage dealing, however it's fun to carry people. Also like I just said, only creature of a certain size can be picked up. Technically only those creatures with a combat weight of 2100, or creature the size of a concavenator or smaller of course. Now I'm gonna change the order here a bit because there's something about the stab I need to get out of the way first. It's an ability that deals low amount of damage but it ignores armor and weight of the target, meaning it will do fixed damage to any creature you hit. However the damage I put is 100, meaning that it will do 100 damage to any creature it hits, so I don't think the description is correct. At least I wouldn't really call it a low amount. The pack ability, when used, will also restore a small amount of stamina, though there's one big difference between this one and stab. As you can see, the pack ability can be used while flying, the stab ability cannot. Like it, it has other ability that can only be used if he's either airborne or grounded. Both stab and pack got low cooldown, so they can be used for rapid fire. And speaking of rapid fire... Peck Barrage is a series of peck attacks that increases damage output with every hit. It can stack up to 10 times, however, do pay in mind. While some stat sheet may say that it deals a ton of damage, this ability doesn't ignore weight and armor, meaning that the damage output you do might be lower than what you think. Basically, this ability will do more damage to, for example, a mid tier than compared to an apex and even less should the target have any armor increase abilities on. We have three options for sensibility. The first one being Carnage that increases your attack if you're nearby a corpse. The second ability are Evil Eye that decreases the attack of the creature closest to you, however it will only be activated if you're grounded. The third ability is Flock Migration that decreases stamina use and can be stacked if you're in a group. We have three options for front limb and we can equip two. The first one being barrel roll. It says dash forward in a roll but it actually just makes you go spinny in the air and everything you hit with your wings to take damage. This ability can only be used when flying. The second ability a flail that can also only be used when flying. However this ability is a bit different, it requires you to be a bit more direct. The third ability a wing beat that causes heavy knockback and can be used when flying and or when grounded. We have two options for height, the first one being green feathers, which reduces the stamina use when flying. The second one being tough beak, that reduces your opponent's first hit. However, do pay in mind, 
should you be the one to deal the first blow when entering battle. Then the ability will be deactivated and you will be vulnerable for their counter attack. This ability is more so to give you a chance in case of surprise attack and also to give you a chance to get away because the takeoff on this thing are just nightmarish. Unlike the Thalmodromius or even the modded Quets, this guy needs a full running head start to take off. It is during this takeoff that you will be vulnerable for any attacks. However, should you have a ledge nearby, then you don't need a head start. You can just jump off. For leg abilities, we have three options. The first one being Gripping Claws, that increases your turning speed when grounded. Which I think you need. Without the smart move button, this thing doesn't really turn on a dime. The second ability is Skydiver, that just reduces your fall damage should you do something stupid. The third and last ability are Running Start, that just increases your maneuverability when you're grounded. When it comes to what subspecies you should choose to grow, it kinda depends on just how you want to fight as this creature. In the next section during the fighting style, you will understand just what I'm talking about. However, for now, I do find myself comfortable with extra flight stamina. To understand just how to fight as this creature, there is something I need to talk about. A little misconception, if you will. There's a lot of people who's comparing the Huts to the Quets. While it's understandable, due to the Quets being the only one who is similar to the Huts, their fighting style are completely different. The Quets is a bleeder, the Huts is a damage dealer. Unlike the Quets, the Huts doesn't have any bleeding capabilities. This is why the Huts is a bit tankier than the Quets. And the reason why it's more difficult for the Huts to take down larger opponent. If you still think what I'm saying is nonsense, then do you have any idea on just how OP bleed is? You can just hit your opponent once and then just go hide and let the bleed do its job. As a damage dealer, you need to be close up at all time. And that is particularly difficult for the huts. While its damage outputs are impressive, it itself are not. It's a glass cannon. Yes, it's tackier than the quets, but it's still a glass cannon. I don't think that his range is uh, impressive enough to do damage from afar. No, to do damage, he needs to get close. Real close. So close that the enemy can hit him back. In fact, ditch the sky and go on land if you want any real damage. Do not be stupid and do head to head battle. Do hit and run. This is the reason this change of battle from ground to air and vice versa, why I say the Huts is a difficult uh, creature to play as, or at least fight as. Now due to this strategy and the size and time it takes for this creature to get airborne, that are the reason that I recommend an open terrain to fight at. If there are too many trees or anything similar, then you can take damage just by hitting them. It can also be good to have a few hills, as it's easier for you to take off during downhill. Also, one last thing about fighting style. You can't do a head-to-head -head death clash with a low tier. With your extra bulk compared to the quets and your damage output, this is probably the only tier that you can do a head-to-head -head clash on, and win for that matter. So good luck hitting them. You're not too fast on the ground, but they are. Now, let's be smart about this. This is all about picking and choosing your enemies. And just because you know the best way to deal with a creature, doesn't mean that you should even attempt to it, as it can be difficult to even achieve victory. Especially trying to achieve it alone. Take for example against Apexes. There's no way you should do it alone, at least not when your fighting style are so similar. Remember, head-to-head -head clashing usually favors the one with better stat, and the one with better stat are definitely not the Huts. And proper hits and run usually favors the Bleeders, which the Huts also lacks in. Also, I'm pretty sure that the majority of you are relieved that the chances of being taken out by a single bird is low. After all, you are a mighty apex. Not to mention, the odds are all against the single bird. I mean, he can try and do flybys. However, stamina won't last forever even though it's impressive. And even a single tree may obstruct a hit. Grounding you even. On ground, you're not as mobile as the Thalmodromios or even the Quets, and to do damage, you are forced to be up and close. Even if you have the 75 reduction on, it only works for one attack. And that is only the case if you're not the one to get the first hit off. That is not to say that you can't fight anything 1v1. However, it usually requires for the opponent to be even more at a disadvantage compared to you. The 
because Hunt is a glass cannon, you can't really expect a fair fight from him. Especially if you fight a creature who has better stats than you. And taking into account his arsenal, it's still run on that great of an alternative. However, there are one strategy that the Hots can use that might be a game changer. And while it may work on Apexes, this is way more effective on mid tiers. I only say it works better on mid tiers due to the usual size of mid tiers. Basically, you use the terrain to your advantage. Remember the knockback ability? If you can't damage them directly, damage them indirectly. Pushing people off heights aren't the only option. You can also use it to push people in water. At least the creatures that aren't able to swim that good. Use the knockback to push them back into the water and they will eventually drown. And or if they try to get back on land, you can just bite their heads. Remember, doing headshots deals more damage. So if you can utilize this strategy, then the odds should be in your favor. Again, I'm saying this is more effective against mid tiers due to the fact it's easier to knock back them, and Apexes like the T-Rex may have knockback resistance. Also, it is effective against low tiers as well, but it might not be necessary. I did show you earlier that you can do a head to head clash with a low tier, however, it's much fun to just grab them. And then you can do one of two options. You can either do the one option that everybody probably will do, grab a low tier, fly high up, Goodbye. The other option are in case if you're low on health or have too little stamina. Just a heads up, it takes a lot of stamina to fly and carry these fat dobbers, and they can also struggle and also counter attack, so if you do believe you can't kill him, just become a food delivery service. No matter what tier, no need to bother fighting more than one person. You already need to put a lot of effort just defeating one creature. No need to make things more difficult for you, and dying a dog's death. So to sum it all up, against Apexes, don't bother trying to fight them alone. Your flying attacks does too little damage, and your ground attacks put you in an unfavorable position. Gather a team, do hits and run, take turns. With time, you'll eventually be able to chip off so much health that you can just go in for the kill. Against mid tiers and possibly apexes if you can, use the terrain to your advantage. Either push them off high places or push them into water where they drown. If they try to get back on land, then attack them or push them back. Again, I only say a possibility for Apexes, as long as they do not have any knockback resistance, or are close to an edge. Against low tiers, you can try to do a head-to-head -head clash, however, that is a bit a waste of time since they are too fast, rather just use your clamp and then you can choose yourself what to do with your victim. Now, I only did this creature due to the fact that he was released just a few days ago and I just couldn't help but wanting to play him so much. The usual comeback of videos will continue as usual soon, you can go to my community post to see how to vote for creature. And with that, I will see you guys later.